Yeah. Go on, give God a praise. Where's the witnesses at? Any witnesses over here? Here in the middle, any witnesses? Witness? <laughs> Come on. Happy New Year. Welcome to New Song Church. My name's Brandon. I'm the lead pastor here. Got a chance to meet some of you um, on the way in. Uh, if I didn't get a chance to meet you, I hope that you'll give me the opportunity to meet you before you go. Um, to our campus in Ukiah, we want to hand things over to our campus pastor there um, as they get ready to hear a live message and a living word right there in the room. Uh, but we've enjoyed having you with us for um, worship. As we've enjoyed having all of you here in the room, it's just better in the room. I know there's lots of options these days, but there's nothing better than being in the room. So once again, Happy New Year. Um, in the, the Bible, there's a word, um, uh, blessed. Makarios is, is the word in the New Testament, and it means blessed. And that word blessed means happy. And so I am praying for um, a happy and blessed new year for you. Um, we are still in the first of the year. That means we're in the first of the first month, the first of the week. Maybe you would even call this the first of your day. And we believe what we do first matters. We believe in a biblical principle of first. And so we do as we've always done at New Song and very intentionally and around focused prayer Give the first part of the year to Jesus. Before we like to say, before we say anything, before we do anything, before we go anywhere, we give this time to the Lord. And so thank you for joining us. What you're part of this morning is a celebration, but it's an overflow of everything that's been going on this week. And there are several ways to opt in, and you can find all of these things on our website at newsongonline.church. In fact, if you go to newsongonline.church slash prayer, it will take you right to our 21 days of prayer and fasting page. And so I encourage you to visit there and join in on what's taking place, whether that's a daily reading plan that we're all engaged in. Don't worry that you're a week behind. Some of you are waiting to have 14 days of prayer and fasting. This is your opportunity, all right? Everyone is welcome. Jump in. We have a daily reading plan that we're sharing together on the YouVersion app. There's an invitation for you to join there on that page. Uh, there's an invitation to daily prayer. We're joining by Zoom every day, seven days a week from 8.30 to 9. If that's a time slot that works for you, join in, jump in, pray with us every day. If that's not a time slot that works for you, find a time slot that works for you and pray with us every day. We're praying for revival in the church, the church of Jesus Christ. We're praying for renewal in our cities, Windsor, Ukiah, everywhere in between and everywhere beyond. And we are praying for an awakening. And I believe this is a prayer that is being answered. I believe part of why you're here this morning is you didn't just wake up, but you have an awakening inside of you to the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. In fact, we're working on a series called Presence. That's not what we're starting today. <laughs> but we're going to start a ser series soon on the presence of Jesus. But today we are beginning a new series and this title of the series is Good Shepherd. I believe we have arrived. I know I have arrived to this year ready to go. God has been asking me for about the last month, are you ready? And by the time I reach the end of the year and the beginning of this year, I am confident that I am ready. And I don't think I'm alone. As I have conversations with you, as we've been talking over these last couple months, there's something about us that wants to shake off the old. And walk in the new. So I'll ask you, are you ready? Are you ready? Come on. I'm ready. All right. And so being ready, I was thinking about this week, praying for you, what I would share with you today, what God would have me to share with you today. And there was um, this thought that if we are ready, then we are ready to be led. That we need to be led. Every one of us would say, every one of us could share a time where we've allowed something else to lead us. Or maybe self has led us. And we would say that we're ready 
to be led by something, someone else. And I'm here to suggest today that it is the shepherd, the good shepherd. And that's the title of this series, just a short three-week series. And we're going to be going through Psalm 23. It's familiar. It's comforting. I often, for those reasons, read it at funerals. But God was telling me if it's good enough for the dead, (laughs) it may be good enough for the living. That God may have something to speak to you this morning from this familiar psalm, Psalm 23. Many of you may have memorized it as a child. Many of you may know it today. I'll be preaching on it for three weeks and we're going to divide it into three parts. And we're going to do the first three verses this weekend. And we'll do the next two next weekend. The weekend after that we'll do the last verse. It's only six verses, the entire psalm. And that's what we'll do in the next three weeks. And I hope you'll just decide right now to be here for all of it. Don't miss any of it. We're so glad you're here today. And I just want to remind you that the Bible calls us sheep. Turn to your neighbor and say, he just called you a sheep. Turn to your other neighbor and go, bah. No, don't do that. No, don't, don't. Some of you did it. Don't do that. All right. <clears throat> But let me show it to you in Psalm 100 before we get to Psalm 23. Psalm 100, you can turn to your Bibles there. Put a finger in, hold your spot at Psalm 23. Flip back to Psalm 100, verse 3. It says this. We'll put it on the screens for you. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us. And we are his. We are his people. And the, say that word with me. The sheep. Do we have that back there? Psalm 100. I want everybody to see it. I don't want anybody to miss it. I don't want anybody to think I'm making this up. All right, that last part of the scripture. We are his people and the what? And the what? Some of you haven't bought in yet. By the end of the service, I'll get you there. And then in John 10.10, very familiar, again, very famous uh, verse, uh, John for chapter 10, verse 10 says, The thief comes only to steal, what's it say? And kill and what? I come that they may have what? Life and have it abundantly. Look at verse 11. I am the good what? Shepherd. It says it again. What? The good shepherd lays down his life or gives his life for the sheep. And in verse 14, he repeats it again, I am the good shepherd. Everybody say good shepherd. Okay, now, here's what I want to say about this. I am really glad that God is a good shepherd since I am a sheep. That's deep. Let that sink in. Some of you are going to miss it. Okay, because I saved this till after I called you a sheep But then it shows you that the Bible called you a sheep. And in fact, Jesus called you a sheep. But sheep, you may not know this, are the dumbest animal alive. Okay? I mean, sheep cannot even feed themselves. Listen to me, because you're already wondering if that's true or not. You're thinking. Some of you have been around sheep. Some of you saw a sheep one time. Um, They can't eat. Because you're thinking, well, can't I, Pastor, can't I read the Bible for myself? Yes, absolutely you can. But sheep, just like us, and us just like sheep, have to be led and fed. Because it is the Holy Spirit that guides us, that leads us to the Good Shepherd. And it is the Good Shepherd then that enlightens the Scripture for you. It's the Good Shepherd that leads us, as we will see, to green pastures and still waters. So I love Psalm 23. Anybody? Any fans of Psalm? Oh, man, hands all around the room. Praise God. All right. And it says this, the Lord is my what? Shepherd. He's a good shepherd. And because he's a good shepherd, I shall not want. I need to point out that the word want here is not what we typically think of when we think of the word want. Because some of you got excited. Uh, You decided to start the the year at the gym and at church. And you think, yes, that's what I needed to hear, that I'm going to get everything that I want. 
But in the Hebrew, what the Hebrew means here is the word lack. I shall not lack. And the reason I want you to understand that is the good shepherd does not provide all that you want. He provides all that you what? Need. Yes. So that you lack nothing, which is good for us. I'll use the Jewish people as an example because I'm already offended you. Uh, the people of Israel wanted a king. And in wanting a king, they wanted a political and or military leader. That's what they wanted. By the way, we want the same thing. And if you don't think so, watch how your prayers and watch how your moods run this election year. So we're just like them and they're just like us. They wanted a political and military leader. But listen, that's not what God gave them. God gave them a Messiah. And we need what they needed. So aren't you thankful that he provides not what we want, but what we need. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. It doesn't mean that we're going to get everything that we want but listen, it does mean, and this is really good. This is actually really good news for us. We are going to get, I get, you get everything that we need. So if I need it, listen to this, if I need it, my shepherd will provide it. Yes? It's a really good spot to say amen. Yeah. Let me say it another way. Uh, for 45 years, I've been a Christian. This year I will turn 50. And I wasn't going to say that. <clears throat> but 45 years, that means for 45 years I've been following Jesus. And I'm very, I can stand here and say, I've witnessed it. I'm very, very glad that he hasn't answered all of my prayers. Right? All of my want prayers. Um, he's answered all of my prayers. Sometimes he said no. All right? And sometimes he said wait. And some of you are praying for things this morning, things you've been praying for a long time, desires of your heart, things you've waiting to see come, things you've been waiting to see change. Can I just tell you that God always answers our prayers in three ways, yes, no, and wait. Can I just tell you, you may be in a wait season. Amen. So just continue to seek God in prayer. And so I'm thankful, though, that he said no in some of those cases. I'm grateful that he said no in some of those cases. Why? Because the Lord is my shepherd. And I shall not, have not lacked. I shall not want. So we're going to look at that today because God does, does not allow you to lack anything that you need. Because he's a God, a good shepherd that provides. And that's the title of today's message. He provides. He provides. And then next week we're going to look at he protects. And then the week after that we're going to look at God's he promises. And this is a word that has been coming up as we've started this year over and over and over again in our prayer calls as the Holy Spirit has led us. In our devotion, in conversation with one another, promises of God. That we would lay hold of the promises of God. And understand that he is the one that provides. So number one, here's the first thing he provides. We're going to look at three things. Number one, green pastures and still waters. Verse two says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. Now let me just tell you what I think green pastures and still waters represent. I think they represent contentment and peace. Contentment and peace. A sheep that has green pastures is content. And a sheep that has still waters has peace. So then, a believer's life should be characterized, if you are a follower of Jesus, your life should be, my life should be characterized by contentment and peace. This would be a good moment just to take a little personal inventory and to think about that. Because if you're not content and you're not at peace, and I don't mean to be mean, but you might not be following 
your shepherd. You might not be following the good shepherd because the good shepherd makes us lie down in green pastures and beside still waters. I believe this is one of the reasons that you come to church. And Sundays are for church, everybody. I believe you come to church for green pastures and still waters. We come to church and we experience the still waters of worship. We were just have been in that moment. We continue in that moment as we open the word. What they do makes my job easy because we are beside still waters. And there's peace in the presence of God. That we can come into church, no matter what has happened to us this week, no matter how high, no matter how low, upset, anxious, worried, fearful, unsure, and all of a sudden the presence of God comes in and there is just still waters. There's peace. Peace comes in, right? How many of you experienced that? Yeah, the peace of God comes in. And then we come to church for, for, for green pastures. Because God has provided teachers and preachers, not just me, but others. Obviously, we have many that stand here, like Dr. Herndon did just last week. And we open up the word because um, that's their calling, the calling and the gift. And so when someone opens up the word to you, what it does is it helps you see things. It gives you godly perspective. It gives you vision for your life and purpose for your life. But hear me. So we need to come to church, yes, and sit beside the still waters in worship and feed from the green pastures uh, during the message. But one time a week or even to be here a couple times a month, it's just not enough. I don't have to convince you of that. You're green already. Listen to this. God does not want a weekend affair with you. He wants to marry you. We're the bride of Christ. He wants to have a marriage relationship with us. A marriage relationship with you. To live with you every day. Not just when you want him or when you need him. He wants to provide green pastures and still waters for you every day. Hear me, our lives, you know this. We've talked a lot about this. Our lives get so full and they get so busy. If you don't have some green pastures and some still waters during the work week, you're going to have some trouble, right? Would you agree with that? Yeah. And so he provides it for us. What does he provide? Say it with me. Green pastures and still waters. Now there are two words in this verse that I just couldn't get past. All right, and I wanted to talk about that we haven't talked about. And they are the words in the Hebrew. They, they kind of, it, it strikes me that he said um, that, that, that he makes, right? Did you catch that? He makes me lie down. And some of you um, have children. And some of you brought your children today. Uh, thank you for bringing them. Um, and thank you for dropping them off next door. Uh, we have a great environment for them. And they're welcome here, but we have a great environment there for them, for them to learn about Jesus on their level. But we love children, and some of you have children, and, and some of you perhaps, just perhaps, you've thought this um, with your children. Your children are, we'll say, struggling. All right, and uh, some of you have said at times something like this. If you don't behave, you're going to take a nap. I'm going to, um, if you don't change your attitude, I'm going to make you lie down. Right? Got, got really quiet in here. Um, sometimes Jill has to say that to me. Um, <laughs> when we get tired and when we get grumpy, uh, sometimes we need to lie down. You've heard me say before, sometimes, sometimes the most spiritual thing you could do is take a nap. All right? And he makes us lie down. I wonder how many times God has looked at us as his kids and said, you need a nap. <laughs> like, he makes me lie down. Um, we heard a um, message on Friday night here as the men of this church gathered for encouragement and connection. And, and uh, man, it's just good to be with the men of God. And, and uh, we, we heard about being filled 
And, and I got this picture because I kind of grew up around trucks. And, and I noticed how all you men sat up last week when Dr. Hernan was talking about cars. So I tried really, car, really hard to have a car, kind of a car illustration this week. And, and so um, one of the men in our group, maybe more than one, um, drives a fuel truck, a tanker truck, a supply truck. And I don't know if you know this, but when you go to the gas station, there's big tanks underground that get filled so that you, you can drive in there, pull your car in, and fill up your car. And maybe you've actually shown up at times when the big tanker truck that has the fuel in it to put in the tanks underground so you can put that in your car so you can go, it comes in there to fill those tanks. And, and that truck, that supply truck, there's people in our church that could tell you where they go. They go to the, the refinery or they go to, to the, the, where the supply is. And they come to uh, the fuel station, they fill those tanks, and you come and fill your tank. And, and God was just showing me that, that sometimes um, I'm just so, um, I'm out there driving my tanker truck, and I'm, I'm filling up my family, and I'm filling up my church, and I'm, I'm filling, up my, filling up my neighbors, and I'm, I'm filling up the community, and, and, and I'm out of gas myself. I'm driving a tanker truck with a supply of fuel that enables the power for other people to go, and I'm, I'm alongside the road out of gas myself. And sometimes we just need to rest. We need to get in God's presence, and we need to be filled by him. Because that's not just a pastor problem. That's a people problem. You have that same problem. You're giving it away and giving it away and giving it away and pouring it out and pouring it out and pouring it out. But if you don't take time to be filled up, you're going to be alongside the road with a supply of fuel that can't get anywhere because you don't have any fuel yourself. I've witnessed it. Yeah. Nah. Green pastures, still waters. So the one thing he's providing, he's providing them. Let's say it another way. When I said sheep can't feed themselves, obviously they are able to eat the grass. But they, if you ever watch sheep, they, they bend down and they chew. And we too, can I just tell you, church, we need to make an effort to bend down. We need to make it a pro we need to do the work of bowing down and spending time in the presence of God to feed from his word. All right, ready for the second thing? Second thing the shepherd provides is healing and restoration. Say healing and restoration. Psalm 23, verse 3 says, He restores my soul. That's the first part of the verse. He restores my soul. Let me ask you a question. Has your soul ever been crushed? Because when you go back to the Hebrew here, there's this, this restoring is... Um, restoring that which has been injured or damaged or broken. He restores my soul. He restores your soul. And we don't really use that phrase a lot in culture, my soul was crushed, but we do use another phrase that's like it and means the same thing, my heart was broken. Has your heart ever been broken? Are you here this morning with a broken heart? The loss of a loved one. Loss of a job. A career. It seemed like just that that was it, that that's what God had for you. Maybe just lost hope. Loss of a friend, a friendship, um, a relationship. Maybe um, you went through a difficult health issue. Did it break your heart? Of course it did. You can say yes. Of course it did. It's normal. It's, nor it's normal for our heart to be broken by a broken world. But there's someone who can restore it. Isn't that good news? Isn't that good news? Someone that can restore it. All right. Here's two of my favorite verses. I have a lot of favorite verses. I was thinking last night, I wonder how many times I've said that in a service like this. Hundreds, maybe thousands. But um, I have a lot of favorites. So here's two of them. Uh, they are verses that Jesus quotes about himself from the book of Isaiah. Um, Isaiah, uh, the book of Isaiah was written some 700 years uh, before the time of Jesus. Um, an Old Testament book. Jesus quotes it a lot. All right, But he's quoting two scriptures about himself in the New Testament in Luke chapter 4 verse 18. He has sent me. Say that with me. He has sent me. One more time. 
He has sent me, Jesus says, and then Jesus sends you, so he has sent us. Um, He has sent me, God the Father has sent me, Jesus says, for this purpose. For what purpose? To heal the brokenhearted. To heal the brokenhearted. And another one of my thousands of favorite verses. Matthew 12, verse 20 says, a bruised reed he will not break. Oh, I love that verse. Love that verse. Have you ever been bruised? A bruise is, they tell me, bleeding underneath the surface. It's uh, bleeding somewhere on the inside. Bleeding in your soul, your heart. Listen, good news. God's not going to break you. He's going to bind you up. Binds up the broken heart. He's going to bind up that wound, and he's going to heal you. Now, in Matthew 12, I want to show you something. When he says this, he's answering the Pharisees, okay? And so the Pharisees are just this group of people that have come to challenge Jesus and what he's saying and, and, and what he's doing. And, and he's, he's quoting uh, this to the Pharisees um, because they're mad at him because he healed a man with a, a, a withered hand, a, a shrunken hand, on the Sabbath. And you weren't supposed to do those kinds of things on the Sabbath. That's work. But can we all say it wasn't work for God? All right? Um, so he quotes this scripture. And then he says this, but says it a little differently than, than he had said it before. The other two times he says, which of you, if you have an ox, ox that falls into the ditch, will not pull it out, even if it's on the Sabbath. But this time here, this spot in Matthew, he says it this time differently. He says, which of you, if you have a, want to guess? Sheep. If you have a sheep that falls into a pit, will not Pull him out on the Sabbath. Now, I believe everything Jesus did was perfect. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. But Jesus is perfect, and that's good news. And he's a good shepherd. If you fall in a pit, this good shepherd is going to come pull you out. Reminds me of another one of my favorite verses, but we'll save that for another time. All right. And so um, he's the shepherd. We're the sheep. He heals this man with the withered hand, and now he talks about a sheep. And he says, and isn't a person more important than a sheep? Okay, let me just say this. How many of you have ever, you don't have to raise your hand. How many of you have ever fallen into a pit? Maybe not an actual pit. Some of you maybe have. Um, But have fallen into a spiritual pit. Maybe a season where you just felt like you were in the pit. When I was growing up, I don't know if we can still say this, but we used to say, well, that's just the pits. All right, so, all right, so that's, that's the situation here. You've fallen into a pit. In other words, you were just going along, and everything was fine. Everything was wonderful. And then all of a sudden, unexpected, totally unexpected, you, your soul, you're just in a pit. It's the pits. And it wasn't anything you did that caused it to happen. It just happened. Or maybe... Behind door number two, it's something, somebody pushed you in a pit. Don't raise your hand and don't point. (laughs) But if anybody ever pushed, have you ever been pushed into a pit? It's a great story in the Bible. Maybe you know it, maybe you don't. But it's a story about a guy named Joseph. And his brothers actually physically throw him into an actual literal pit. They like throw him in. Yeah, so that happened. Yeah, they throw him in a pit. Um, And I'm saying this... um, just uh, because I heard it can happen. Um, a third option. Um, this has never happened to me. Uh, wink, wink. But um, maybe somebody you know. Uh, probably didn't happen to you either. But um, have you ever um, found yourself in a pit that you dug yourself? Any, uh, any pit diggers? Wow. Hands going up around the room. Wow. You, you didn't have to raise your hand, but awesome. A lot of pit diggers here today. All right. We're going to announce a work day coming up soon. So you guys, I want to see all of you uh, pit diggers. All right. Uh, But listen, even if you dig the pit, listen to this. Even if it's you that dug the pit, whether you got there, it just happened. You don't know how it happened. You just end up there. Or maybe somebody came along and they did this to you. They pushed you into the pit. Or you dug your own pit. And again, not me, but maybe somebody you know. um, Find yourself, have you ever found yourself in a pit and, and, and you know you're in a pit, but you just keep digging? 
Okay, um, I don't know what's up with that. But listen, this is how good the good shepherd is. No matter how you got in the pit, even if you dug your own pit, this is how good he is. He's going to get you out. He'll come and get you out. Here's number three. I told you there's going to be three. Here's the third one. Paths of righteousness. Here, right here. This is, this is something else the good shepherd provides. I want you to think about this today, right, this week, this year. Paths. Any hikers here? Man, a room full of pit diggers and hikers. I love it. Um, think, about, think about the time you've been on a hike. Think about hiking. Maybe you that aren't hikers, think about what it might be like to hike. All right? Um, and so you're walking in the forest or you're walking in the redwoods and um, suddenly a path appears. You have a choice. All of us have a choice. When it comes to paths, we have a choice. Take the path or just continue to go our own way, work on our way through the brush and through the thorns or take the path, all right? And so he gives us a path. He leads us to a path of righteousness. That's the second part of verse three. We'll put it on the screen. He leads us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Now, paths of righteousness, let me just tell you, the word righteousness means a lot. Uh, for today, it means right standing with God. We are in right standing with by God. How do we get into right standing with God? By grace through faith. This is so clear in Scripture. It's not anything else. It's by grace through faith. It's not grace plus works that saves you. It's not, by the way, it's not grace plus anything. It's just amazing grace. It's just grace. It's either grace or works, and it can't be both. It's got to be grace or works. That's what it says. Because grace is a gift and works is something we earn. And let me tell you this, as we start this year, you've got to have this as a foundation. If you don't start with grace as a foundation of your life, you will never go anywhere with God. Some of you have wondered why you haven't gone anywhere with God to this point. I don't want you to look back on this year and wonder why I didn't go anywhere with God this year. Let me help you. Make grace your foundation. Grace. Let's understand more about God's grace this year. And just know that grace puts me in right standing with God. So it's not you're saved and then you're not saved. And then you're saved. It's not that you're saved and then you're lost. And then you're saved and you're lost. And then you're saved and you're lost. It's, it's grace. It's not dependent upon your works. If it was dependent on our works, if it was dependent on my works, we'd be in trouble, right? Does anyone follow me on that? Okay. It's just, it just can't be. It's, it's got to be. It's dependent on the blood of Jesus and that we've received the free gift of God. Okay. I never thought about it this way, but I was thinking about it this week, and I, I hope you follow me on this. But grace puts us in right standing with God, but sin affects our right position. Now hear me on this because this is really important. On God's side, over here, on God's side, because of the work that Jesus did, God, he has put me through Jesus in right standing with God. But when I sin, something is affected in my standing with God. You've got to get this. You've got to listen to how I'm saying it. My standing with God, not God's standing with me. In other words, God still loves me. God still accepts me. God still sees me as clean and purified. God still um, accepts me by the blood of his son. I am still forgiven. But something has changed in my heart, in my relationship with God, how I see God, how I see myself, how I see you, by the way. And so if you know a judgmental person, that person is in sin because he's also judging himself. And so he's judging you too. That's deep. But if you know a person that's walking in an open relationship with God and receiving God's grace, his amazing grace, then he will extend grace and offer grace to you. But if he won't give you grace, he's not getting grace himself. Not giving himself grace. Are you following me? 
Grace puts me in a right standing with God and nothing can change my right standing with God. Amen, everybody? Because it is dependent, solely dependent on the blood of Jesus. But when we sin, when we are out of alignment with God, it changes the way I'm standing with God. Not the way that God is standing with me. Are you still with me? Let me show it to you in the Bible. The Bible talks of imputed righteousness. That God imputed righteousness to us. It's an accounting term, which means that he put righteousness in our account. Okay? Why don't you love when somebody puts something in your account? Well, here is God putting righteousness in our account, okay? Took sin out of your account, put it over here, put it in Jesus' account, but it is imputed. I love the New King James Version uses the word imputed, and I'll show it to you, but I want to read it out of the ESV this morning from Psalm 32, verse 1. We'll put it on the screen, you follow along, all right? Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, Whose sin is covered. This is imputed righteousness. Forgiveness by grace. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity. This is the word I'm saying is imputed. The New King James says, blessed is the one that the Lord does not impute sin. Okay? Does not count sin against them. It goes on. And in whose spirit there is no deceit. Now watch. This is grace. God puts us in right standing. But here, David, the, the author, the writer here, inspired by the Holy Spirit, is talking about his own sin. And he says, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. In other words, it began to affect David. He's saying it be it's beginning to affect me. And it begins to affect us too. It didn't affect his relationship, God's relationship toward him. But it affected his relationship toward God and it affects sin, affects our relationship towards God. Did you get it? All right. I got to say that again because it's so good. All right. It did not affect God's relationship toward David, but it did affect David's relationship toward God. Look, we'll finish it up here. For day and night, for day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave my iniquity or my guilt or my, the shame of my sin. By the way, uh, the Hebrew here, it goes into other things, but the root of it means the weight of my sin. You took the weight off of me. Because I confessed it. So he leads us in paths of righteousness so we don't have to live weighed down with our sins. Even though he's already forgiven us for our sins. Do you understand? That we would not, too many for too long, you're walking around under the weight of your sin. You've already been forgiven, but come bring it to Jesus and let him lift that weight this morning. As you respond to him this year, as we develop this habit, this vertical, this uphill habit. Now, I just think I need to hit one more thing and then we're finished. It says, he leads me. Shepherds do not drive sheep. You can drive a car. You've heard of cattle drives. But you don't drive sheep. You lead sheep. When Jill and I, um, years ago, uh, we had the opportunity to um, visit Israel. And they took us um, to this place, this, this valley. One of the valleys that we were, uh, we had the opportunity to visit. And they said in the time of Jesus, in this certain, in this particular valley, um, sometimes there would be as many as 20,000 sheep. Can you imagine? 20,000 sheep. And the reason for it is because this was an area, this particular valley... Um, was the greenest grass. And so the shepherds would come from all over and they would bring their sheep because this is where the green grass was. And so the shepherds, as they had their sheep there, they would have fellowship, they would talk together and share life together, they would even eat together, they told us. But then um, 
so they could be home before night, before the predators come out, um, so they could protect the sheep. Next week we're going to talk about God protects. That's next week. Uh, the shepherds would stand up um, just one by one, and the shepherd would, he would have a certain word. Each one of them would have a word, and they would call out that word, and they would start walking um, in the direction um, of home, in the direction that they came from. And the sheep, one by one, would follow them. The shepherd would stand up, he'd call out his word, he'd begin walking in his direction, and his sheep out of the 20,000, 400, 600, I don't know, would follow him. You can Google this. Actually, they have videos for this. Yeah. And so um, the next shepherd would stand up, call out his word, and start off in his direction. Another 800,000 sheep would follow him. Until not a single sheep was left in that valley. No, no sheep left behind, right? No sheep got mixed up because the sheep know the shepherd's voice. You know, Jesus said that. Did you know that? Jesus said, my sheep know my voice and they follow me. So what's the key to following the shepherd? Simple. I just told you. Hearing his voice. What's the key to hearing his voice then? Spending time with him. Spending time in his presence. Spending time in worship. Spending time in his word. Spending time in prayer. That's the key to hearing his voice. Spending time in his presence. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever wished you had more confidence? Some of you are saying, yeah, right now. Um, I have. There's been many times that I, I lacked confidence. I didn't feel like I had enough confidence. But do you know when I've had more than enough confidence? When I've heard from God. So let me show you the word confidence. We're going to put it up on the screen. Let me show you the word. Is it up there? You see it? You know I love words. I love names. I love words. Um, I have a lot of favorite Bible verses. I love this word. I love the word confidence. Everybody see the word? Confidence. See it? Everybody see it? Okay. Now remove the last three letters. What's that word? Show us confidence again. Show us confidence again. The first slide. There's confidence. Okay, take away those last three letters. Okay, fine. Okay, leave that up there. Do you know when you have confidence? When God has confided in you. Let me read it from the scriptures. John 15, 15 says, Jesus said, I no longer, I don't call you slaves anymore. Because a master doesn't, what? Confide. The master does not confide in slaves. But now you are my friends, since I have told you everything the Father has told me. Again, I've been saved most of my life, and I still mess up. I still face temptation. I still face trouble. And I know that I have to spend time in green pastures and beside still waters. I have to find a room. I have to find room. I have to find a room. I have to close the door. I have to worship God. I need to get on my knees. I need to get my mind off the world and off my problems. And I need to get in the world's problems and get in his presence. Because when we get in his presence, the shepherd, the good shepherd, speaks. And he leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. If you're not already, I want to invite you to bow your heads. It's okay. I just want to pray for you. If you're new here, just this is a time to respond. We just bow our heads to shut everything out just for a moment. And uh, maybe even close your eyes. I feel like um, the first 
message of the year, at least that I'm speaking to you. We had a guest last week. I'm speaking to you for the first time this year. That the Lord wants to speak to us. That we would prioritize spending time in his presence. You know. You know you do better spending time with God. You know that you have less anxiety and less anger and more peace and more purpose when you're spending time with God. You know that when you go through difficulty or go through disappointment and it crushes you, you know you've witnessed it. God can restore, God will restore, God has restored your soul. And you know he will lead you. And you know and I know we need a leader. We need one to lead us in the right path. And he does that. He confides in us and gives us confidence when we spend time with him. That's my burden this weekend. And don't feel like, you know what, don't feel like I've made this commitment before. I made it last year during 21 days of prayer. And I didn't do it every day, and I haven't done it every day. I'm not even asking you to do it every day. I'm just asking you, when you can, make it a priority to spend time in his presence. Put on some worship music. Pray. Read his word. That's what these 21 days are all about, realigning ourselves, resetting, reclaiming, so we might be restored in our souls. That as we fast, as we give something up, people are giving up all kinds of things. They're giving up certain foods, giving up alcohol, giving up coffee, giving up social media. One person wrote me this week and told me that they're giving up business meetings since we have a business meeting coming up. Don't give up business meetings. 21 days will be over anyway. But take that time that you would be doing that thing, eating that thing, watching that thing, and get in the presence of God. Put on some worship music. Pray. Use that time to read the word and let him pour his spirit into you. Holy Spirit, pray for my church. Pray for my family. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me today? We will ask that every weekend this year. And it may be something completely different than anything that I've said. But Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to speak to me. Ask him this. What more, what more do you want for me this year? What more do you want from me this year? I pray that this would be a year of blessing. That 2024 would be a year of blessing. Of favor, of multiplied favor on this church and on your families and on you in the name of Jesus Christ. We dedicate this year to the Lord as a year of following the good shepherd. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We've got praise this morning.